Okay, so this book review is on 12 million black 12 million black voices. Text by Richard Wright. And it's basically it gives you an insight and it's bas basically the voices of the enslaved our enslaved ancestors during the I wouldn't say it wasn't too far far gone. Uh, 1915 start. And it basically the in the beginning of the book it talks about it's like timeline. Uh, at first, what were going on? What were going on on the plantations, and how the slave masters would treat them? How the slaves ma slave masters would treat the men and the women, and how they would degrade the woman, and how they would bash and sexualize her, rape, you know, the children, the the mothers, and so on and so forth, and how they would separate. You know, try to separate the black people. You know, house, house, and field. You know, because the light skins was in the house, and then the dark skin was in the field, and that's how that black, that light versus dark situation. And even it traveled down to the, today's generation. You know, because people still talk about that, and they feel as if they're superior because they're light skinned because they were closer to the white people. And yeah, that's basically that was one thing that it talked about here, and it talks about the labor and picking the cotton and how I made their hands. It was, it was a, it was a, a near, like a, it was a, it was a poetic type. It was like poetry, like for real. And it broke down like how their hands would look, the clothes they had on and the houses that they lived in and how they were burned down and they would just watch it while it burned down. And yeah, it was crazy. They had like, they literally lived in shacks. They lived, literally lived in, wooden boxes that had you know um like cracks in it and all the rain and it, it, like during the winter it was terrible because it was cold and it was like they would try to light fires and even burn the houses so they could you know but what else they explain in here and then they went from see right here they have like titles in front of like it was like four chapters this one was our strange birth and it was talking about you know like i said during the enslaved times and then it go oh shoot and then it goes into oh it was talking about the black waiter the black sharecropper and the different jobs they had the maid and how they would have the low end jobs and so on and so forth and it says right here, but as we blacks continue to multiply and spread the Lord of the lands, and they had the bosses of the buildings and the Lord of the lands. The bosses of the buildings was in the city, but this is like before they decided to move to the north. Began to multiply and spread. The lords of the land sought to distribute us on the plantation so that our population would never exceed that of the whites or grow so great in any one area as to constitute an insurrector insurrectionary <laughs> insurrectionary danger you know of course they were afraid they would feel like the black people would plan certain they would would plan things to try to overrule or to attack the white people and to you know re basically rebel against them they did start to, a lot of them did start to rebel though they did that so they wouldn't rebel and said it was all these things and not the strength of more ideas alone that lessened the grip of the lord of the lands upon us you know it says right here we were freed because of the gnawing of some obscure sense of guilt because of a clouded premonition of impending disaster because of a soil becoming rapidly impoverished because of the hunger for fresh land because of the new logic of life that came in the waking of clank clanking machines the city when they went to new york city and it was basically wait was this the book where it was talking about incarcerate i think this was incarceration and it will talk about how they will make their own language. I think they will take the language that from the African tribes and like break it up so they wouldn't notice that they were using that language, and they will use that to communicate with each other. So based and then they will talk about you know, and so on and so forth. And da, 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 da. lynching. They had poem like poem songs about them, of course. Uh, I'm trying to go to the next page. Take it forever. I already talked about that. Uh, kitchenettes they were talking about. Wait, how the heck did I get all the way over here? <laughs> they were talking about kitchenettes, but 
it seemed like okay never mind this was still in the south but church how you know that was their only sense of hope the bible and the stuff that was they were talking about in the bible how they would have to wait for the deliverance and freedom how they need to just you know hold off and you know praise him and so on and so forth and yeah how that made them happy and that was like probably the only time in their day where they were basically they felt free was when they were at church and it shows you know the pastor and so on and so forth the fields and they would talk about how they would transfer the slaves from plantation to plantation like Sometimes I think they would go to the West or they would go to different like cities in the South, not cities, but states in the South and, you know, uh, chuck, chuck corn and cotton and so on and so forth. And they did it a lot because cotton became, you know, very, yeah, then. And yeah, like corn and they had different types of um different foods. I'm at, I don't remember the foods. I haven't read this in a minute. I made a book re book report on this one, but I lost it. So I had to make another one. And they would sleep in the wooden barracks when they would, like, travel. Yeah. And they had to do that and hardly get paid. But they start talking about the death on the city pavements when they moved to the cities. Because they tired, that got tired of the lord of the lands. And the boss of the, of the building would basically lie. They were like, they said political gangsters or something like that and how they would lie and be like oh we get we do more for this for you uh we'll give you more than this if you come and work for us you know of course they're gonna lie we'll give you more than this if you work for us we'll have y'all work in these positions and yada yada and they would have that and then the white people would get mad because the black people did it better but you know that's how it is <laughs> but anyway um it was talking about the how low the jobs would pay and how the black men would leave the homes because they wanted to escape, you know, their blackness. And they would go to, like, white women, or, you know, women of different races because they wanted to escape that blackness. They wanted to escape that um, that suffering. They wanted to escape that, that pain and stuff like that. And that's what uh, one thing that caused, you know, single-parent homes and the black communities was that was one of one of the situations because... The fathers, I guess they felt like they couldn't take it. So they would just leave and just the stress that they were under. They they felt like it would be a huge difference, like a better thing to move to the north. But they found out that obviously they were being lied to. You know, they weren't really getting anything. And then when they would try to move to the suburbs, they would raise that prices on the houses and so on just because they didn't want them to live there. You know, redlining and the gentrification even happened back then when they were where the white people would buy out the buildings and put them up high, like the, the prices for the rent high, and they couldn't even, they hardly afford it. So it would be a lot of them living in those cramped up kitchenettes. That's what they were called, kitchenettes. And it was like, let me see if I can find a picture of a kitchenette. You know, it was like one, two, three bedroom apartments, gas and light free. A dining room for color. Look at the little dining room. What is that? And then right here it says, White people say that we are destructive, destructive, therefore they do not want us in our neighborhoods. They say our presence in their neighborhoods lower the value of their property. That's what they thought of us then. Probably how they think of us now. So. Oh, here they are. Kitchen mats beside the bathroom and then the little boy sleeping. He had to sleep in that. And then this is like probably how much people were in the in the, that little room. It says the kitchenette throws desperate and help unhappy people into an unbearable closeness of, of association, thereby increasing latent friction, giving birth to never-ending quadrilles of recrimination, accusation, and victim and vit, vindicativeness. I'm reading too fast. Sorry. Producing warped personalities. No, when you live in that environment, it's of course you you're gonna have certain feelings. You're gonna have a, your behavior is gonna be, you know, more destructive and so on and so forth. When you're living in situations like that, I think it also talked about how the uh I don't know if it was this book or the Miseducation of the Negro, but I'm pretty sure I read this in this too about how they how prison started and so on and so forth. So I would recommend you to go get that because uh some a lot of some of it is in this book. It definitely is in this book. But 
that was their street. And it was talking about how the boys were getting violent and the girls started having kids at a young age and just the poverty they lived in and how it, yeah, that's going to be destructive. You living in, in this, what you going to, what you going to know about destruction? You know what I mean? What you going to know about negativity and so on and so forth? You thinking your life is going to be great, but you get there and it's not, and it's not like, yeah, you try to make your life better than what it is, but you can't because they're basically refusing refusing it. They're not trying to give you anything. Then when you build it for yourself, they break it down. So then you lose hope. And it says, to break the streak, the bosses of the buildings appeal to us black folks to work. They send labor g- agents into the South to fetch us North. They promise us protection. They tell us that they are our best friends. I mean, I can't find it work, but I know it was political gangsters. Hopefully it was political gangsters. <laughs> and they were called, the white work words were called, uh, we have no relations. Vote, bitch, the poor white man cried, nigga, vote. So the low end wage jobs and the, like, the, the dirty and heavy work, they would call it nigger work, black people work. And yeah, gangster po- politicians, gangster politicians, to divide and exploit us further, the bosses of the building sent their mouthpieces, their gangster politicians to preach, go- to us to preach a gospel that sounds good, of course. But it's, it goes deep within that. It talks about voting, Uncle Tom's Cabin, and it explains why, you know, we have Uncle Tom's and so on and so forth. Live and go by their means. Live and go by their means. Think, just think about that. Live and go. The law says that we are all free, but the bosses of the building say that only they are free. We are caught in a t- tangle of conflicting ideals. We must either swap our vote for bread or starve. Just get this book. <laughs> it's, it's a quick read. I read it within a week, I think, or probably less than that. And then it shows how music was... After, you know, of course, church and the music became something else that was like a a, a vent, like a, a way for us to be happy and so on and so forth. Music. Talk about barriers and kitcheness and how they would help the white people and abandon their children to be maids and stuff for the white people. And their children would be out, off to basically raise themselves. And then men in the making and how we protested about lynching and so on and so forth. I'm going to read this piece, and then I think I'm going to be done with this review. Yeah, because it's the last page. It says, if, Amer- if we black folks perish, America will perish. It will. If America has forgotten her past, then let her look into the mirror of our consciousness, and she will see the living past living in the present. For our memories go back. Through our black folks of today, through the recollection of our black parents, and through the tales of slavery told by our black grandparents, to the times when none of us, black or white, lived in this fertile land. And it says, the difference between black folks and white folks are not blood or color, and the ties that bind us are deeper than those that separate us. The common road for hope, which we all have traveled, has brought us into a stronger kinship than any words, laws, or legal claims. Look at us and know us. Look at us and know us, and you will know yourself. For we are you, looking back at you from the dark mirror of our lives. And then it talks about what it was black folks want. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, I get this last part, but I think I was a little confused. But it was basically talking about how without us, it would be no you, which is true. But you know, even though it's 2016, that doesn't mean anyone's gonna change or you know, different different day, same thing. You know, same old, just a different day. <laughs> but anyway, I would highly recommend this book. It's really informative and it's and just enjoyable to read. It teaches you a lot about their views because it speaks in their voice, like people that were there and they're telling the tale and it's very poetic. So I definitely recommend this book. My next book, I don't know which what it's going to be. I'm reading The Bluest Eyes. I had this book called Melanin, but I think I lost it. I'm so pissed because I really wanted to do a review on that. But hopefully I get to. 
and hopefully I find it. So when I find it, I'll do a review. But I think the bluest eyes and expect that in two weeks. Because I have a lot going on, so I really can't just focus on just reading that. You know, everything else goes into my mind and I can't sit down and just read. So, you know, thank you for tuning in. 12 Million Black Voices. Uh... Check out my other reviews. I have a song out called Sunrise Serenade, so check that out. The description is in the link below. It's SoundCloud, on SoundCloud. But check that out. Support, show love, you know. That's what it do. Now, peace.